Hello everyone, my name is Antonio and I'm an optometrist. In this video, we'll be talking about how to read your glasses prescription. It's a topic that sounds simple, but is not. We will cover how they are calculated, what the numbers inside of them mean, and also some abbreviations that may trouble you, such as the PD, BVD, OS, and OD. By the end of this video, I hope we can understand what components come together to make up a pair of glasses, and it'll also give you the opportunity to know more about your own set of eyes. So without further ado, let's begin. A spectacle prescription is like an instruction set that a dispensing optician can use to make up a pair of glasses. This is written by an optometrist who, in the eye exam, will use various methods to calculate the appropriate lens power. If a patient requires a specific lens type, such as a single vision lens or a progressive addition lens, it will also be specified. The information written on spectacle prescriptions can vary from patient to patient, but typically it'll include the patient's name, power of their lenses, any prism to be included, the pupillary distance, back vertex distance, and the expiry date. Optometrists calculate the prescription by asking you which is clearer, one or two. This will be repeated multiple times with multiple charts as a final prescription becomes finalized. Thanks to technology, optometrists can also measure your prescription via non-subjective methods, such as a retinoscope or an autorefractor. This is to say that optometrists can still find out what a patient's prescription is without even having to say a single word. I'm not going to explain how these methods work in this video, but I'm more than happy to make a separate one for you guys if you are interested, so drop a like if you'd like that to happen. Further on in the prescription, you will also see the pupillary distance, the distance between the two eyes in millimeters and the back vertex distance, which tells us how far the lens should be away from the eye, also measured in millimeters. The pupillary distance is unique to each individual as people have slightly different face sizes, let alone having to account for asymmetry in the human face. The back vertex distance is especially important for higher prescriptions in the vicinity of four diopters and higher, as a difference in even a few millimeters can change the prescription altogether. In which case, frame selection becomes very important. The corrective power of a prescription is comprised of two components. The spherical power, which is used to correct for either myopia or hyperopia, and the cylindrical power, solely used to correct for astigmatism. Think of the spherical power as correcting the axial length aspect of your eyeball and the cylindrical power as correcting the shape form of your cornea. If you happen to have an axially short eye, then a positive spherical prescription would be perfect for focusing the light onto your retina properly, also known as farsightedness. Conversely, if your eye is too long, then a minus prescription would work very well to achieve the desired focal length. Regardless of your axial length, if the shape of the cornea is irregular, in other words, the cornea looks more like a football rather than a soccer ball, it will need to be corrected using cylindrical lenses. So, if one sees a cylindrical power written on their prescription, they can bet that they have astigmatism. If you would like to experience what it feels like to have nearsightedness or astigmatism, I would recommend watching my previous videos. But let's go through a few examples so that we understand this topic for sure. I've created an arbitrary prescription for Mr. Rua, who is a completely made up person with a completely made up prescription. The patient's name is Tahirua, and they live on Queen Street in Auckland. They obtained the prescription on the 1st of January 2021, and the prescription is set to expire on the 1st of January 2023. The pupillary distance has been specified at 31mm apiece, and the back vertex distance is at 14mm. The optometrist has also recommended a single vision distance lens. 
The first clue we can obtain from this prescription is the fact that the spherical power is a positive number, which means that Mr. Rua is hyperopic or farsighted. The cylindrical power is also provided underneath, half a diopter of oblique astigmatism in the right and three quarter diopters of against the rule in the left. The optometrist has also provided a near addition, which is used to make reading glasses or progressive addition lenses. However, because we know that we're making single vision distance lenses, we will not bother with the near add. So we've made up a set of lenses that contain the necessary correction with the optical center sitting at 31 millimeters from the midpoint with the lens sitting 14 millimeters away from the eyes. I hope Tahi enjoys his new glasses. Let's take a look at another example. This time we have another made up person, Karen Mitchell, who lives in Sydney. This prescription looks very similar to Tahi's one from before, but there are a few differences. This time, the optometrist has recommended a single vision near lens used for reading and is specified to be at 12 millimeters away from the eye. Another thing that seems different is that the right and left eye are referred to as OD and OS, which stands for oculus dexter and oculus sinister respectively. However, there is literally no difference between writing OD and writing right eye. So use whichever you feel most comfortable with. Karen has a prescription which includes a negative spherical power, which means that she has nearsightedness or myopia. She also has a moderate amount of with the rule astigmatism at 0.75 and 1.5 diopters. Because the optometrist has recommended a single vision near lens, we will this time take into account the near add. Having a near add of plus 1.5 means that the glasses are designed to be used at a working distance of about 67 centimeters, which is perfect for computer work. Therefore, Karen's resulting near prescription is as follows. I hope she enjoys her glasses. For the next example, we have Amber. She has a positive prescription, so we know she is hyperopic. But down here, we see something that we haven't seen before, which are prisms. Prisms are used to redirect light. So if you need to look straight, but for some reason your eye muscles don't allow you to do that, then prisms become really useful as it lets you maintain binocular vision without having to strain the eyes too much. In Amber's case, the two eyes require base out prisms to account for her inwards deviation. If she needed a base in prism on the other hand, we would know that her eyes deviate outwards instead. The prism component of Amber's prescription should hopefully alleviate any extraocular muscle strains she is experiencing and allow her to have better binocular vision. Amber is stoked to have her new glasses and promises to study hard to become an optometrist. Go her. If you happen to come across prisms in your own prescription, then don't worry. It is not uncommon to have prisms. But if you are unsure why you have them, then it might be worth asking your optometrist why they were included. But I'm going to wrap up this video by leaving you with this another made up prescription and I want to know if you can find out what this person has. Number one, do they have myopia or hyperopia? Number two, do they have astigmatism and if so, what type? Number three, will this person be using their glasses primarily for distance tasks such as driving and watching TV or near tasks such as reading and working on the computer? Let me know in the comments below and if you happen to get all three correct, then you would have exceeded my expectations and it will make me very happy. But that just about does it for today. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then they'll be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.